Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at the strength of the cryptocurrency market. In particular, I want to have a look at the total market cap, how much we are down from the tops compared to the three major cryptos. Reason being is to show where the money is starting to flow to. And of course, we're going to bring up the Bitcoin dominance with this as well. And I'll also give you some of my thoughts about the market. It's been a little while since I feel like I've really dived into how I'm feeling about things as opposed to just strictly on the charts. But don't worry, we won't get too sidetracked as per usual. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon so you can see these videos pop up in your YouTube algorithm news feeds. All right, let's dive in. We're looking at the market cap, the total market cap at the moment. The main thing I'm looking at here is how far we're down from the top, 20% down. So the main things that we look at on the channel are the 50% levels. We look at these in terms of strength and weakness. And the main thing I'm looking at here is the overall strength of the market. And you might note that, sure, we have been seeing an accumulation period now. We can almost say that this has been the accumulation, although there are still some fears that this might be a bull trap and we head all the way back down and take out the lows. In my view, in the way I trade and look at the markets, if that was to happen, then sure, I'll take a fair bit off the table if we were to break through the support levels which have been put in across the board on the majors of Bitcoin, ETH, ADA, total market cap. We've got those levels and we'll look at those in just a sec. But the, the main thing that we could see in terms of the strength was this bottom coming in. So there's a little bit of a triple bottom there. But the main thing, the way I like to trade is a breakout and a retest. And then we break out and a retest again. So although I'm not always buying the exact low and I don't think that's our job. We don't need to be buying the exact low. We just need to be getting in at better opportunities than the tops, which is generally how the market plays out. And no offense to anyone that's buying at those levels is just how the markets work. You know, that's the way they're set up to drive news, to drive fear, drive fear and drive greed. The, the greed comes in at these levels and everyone gets caught out and then fear panic sells at these levels as we quickly tank. But trying not to always catch the exact top and the exact bottom, some of the signs that we look for are breakouts of resistance levels. And we got that back in July, retest and away. So although we don't have to buy the exact lows, that's a good sign right through there. And we don't know for sure. We always do not know for sure that the market is not just faking us and then heading back, but that's the sign that I always look for. You know, it's, we've we've tested it, the market said no, and then we tested it again, and the market said yes. This time you're allowed through, and we had resistance again at some at some highs, but then we came back and tested this level, the one that said no the first time. This time it said yes again, so it said yes, good to go. It said yes, good to go, and if we still want to be uh, extra conservative, we had the next levels. So the market's saying no this time, but this time it said yes, you're, you're welcome to go through. So we've had a few yeses on the way up to our 50% uh, zone. So we've now passed the 50%. We have held it as support for now. We're still a little way off uh, getting a real support on there. But for now, we've had multiple yeses. That feels rather comfortable in, in my books. And should we break down again, I wouldn't want to see us come back and test these levels uh, in around that $1.5 trillion level. So this is the total market cap. And you'll see that there's the same pattern on Bitcoin and very similar on ETH. Reason being is as we're above 50%, so we can see this 50, this is the range from the low to the all-time high. That's strength, uh, stronger on this side and this is weaker on this side. So we've had multiple strength tests and now we've held them as support. And uh, we, as we can see for the major 50% level, we used that tested, bounced and bounced and then we were starting to crawl underneath it but fortunately we got above that. So there's a lot of strength in this pattern and although some people might be still seeing this as a bear trap, uh, sorry, a bull trap, it's, you know, it's still possible but because I've got for my own trading plan, my own way that I like to invest and like I said, I'm just sharing my thoughts with you. You don't have to completely agree. You can think it's completely off and do your own thing. No dramas but because I've got more yeses than nos at the moment, then I just see more strength and for some, it's too far away from the lows. That's okay too. What I look at here is 
what's the downside risk in terms of the the strength and the weakness and of course the market is far weaker when it's in these positions but the upside to that is well the next level of support is only a little way down you know 900 billion here so we would just measure okay well about 30 percent we could lose so we could be buying at these lower levels but the downside is is shorter but of course we have to realize and recognize that it's it's weaker to be buying it when we're under the 50 percent the major 50 we're under uh, a minor 50 percent as well but the risk is a lot lower and if we just zoom out and look at the overall picture looking at knowing that this wasn't there at the time this whole move up uh, our overall uptrend or our overall trend for the entire market is up so if we just zoom out then of course we got plenty more to go and wouldn't it just be easier just to dollar cost average and not worry about anything at all just be buying it on the most fearful times but not dollar cost averaging in at the tops when everything was getting really really greedy in that april and may period then that's a pretty straightforward plan that anyone can use as well so that's what i wanted to mention about the total market cap this is all of the cryptocurrencies bitcoin eth ada and the other 10,000 of them as well. The strength is really building and should we get some retests, we have some levels now which would be nice to see them hold in case of a bull trap. So if we get them to come back, then at least we know, well, look, this level's been tested before and we get a bounce away again. That's a good sign. Obviously, if we break down beneath the lows, personally, my plan says shows off, probably time to start clearing out and uh, wait for the next round. We'll see something similar for Bitcoin, but I just want to go to the Bitcoin dominance first. And what I have been looking for here was a break to the upside, 50 to 53% dominance, Bitcoin holding over the entire market. And we've seen the opposite. We've seen it trend down, but, but now possibly begin to hold the 50%. And, and remember the upside here is stronger in this zone and weaker in this zone and like I noted earlier probably uh, BTCD is heading lower that's if we're to break through that and you can see that it's, it's held the 50% uh, support even before it was this level here so this was what we had previously so it's just bounced off that and then when this high came in it looks pretty clean there and you can see the market tried and it tried again and now we're sort of coming back and figuring out what it wants to do. Does Bitcoin want to take off with its strength or does it want to slip back into this weak zone and give give some more of that dominance over to ETH, to ADA, to a lot of these other major cryptos that are coming into the top 20. So it looks like it's in a bit of a, a decision area at the moment because it's bouncing just on the 50%. So over to Bitcoin. Now it's the same sort of pattern here except Bitcoin fell a little bit uh, lower and retested these these highs we can see right through there whereas for the total market cap you can see the highs were up and then we started to slant down because the rest of the crypto started to fall heavier than Bitcoin did looking at the strength of Bitcoin again you can see the highs came in it was kind of retested but there was a lot more strength found and we moved again and then we came up to that 50%, which is the, the main level that we've been looking for. And just yesterday's trading action finally broke above the highs and the 50% level reasonably cleanly. Of course, we want to see consolidation here before we keep moving. That's always what we want to see so that we start building those stepping stones out. So if I'm looking for the, you know, the, the yeses to show me strength, then that's the big one there. This is a break of the weekly swing and that's something that we teach in the Investor Accelerator. You can find a link to that down below, Investor Accelerator Premium. I, I created this course, well, I've been trading like this for about 10 years, but I created the course, put it together in December. And you can see all the videos that were recorded and cleanly exiting through here and entering through there again. So look, we saved about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 per Bitcoin on that trade there. Not trying to sound amazing or anything. It's just a simple mechanical plan as well. Uh, but we can always be wrong. You know, this market can always pull back. So it's really the most important thing is how do you cope with what the market throws at you? Are you freaking out when this thing tanks down 20% or are you looking at that or is that like a, a stronger time now because we're in an uptrend? Is that a buy the dip opportunity rather than buying 
all the dips on the way down. We want to be buying the dips on the way up and then accumulating at the lows as well. That's the idea, obviously. And we can see some strength was forming on the 50% major level, 34K. That was our average buy-in price. And then if you've been following, hopefully you have, Fear and Greed Index, that's where I'm getting that from. That was the average buy-in price. And now we're just crossing over this 50% range as well. So we're crossing into the stronger side. I'm not saying bullish, I'm not saying bearish, because bearish sounds like the market should go down. It's just that it's a little weaker if it's under here, not meaning that it has to fall, but the market's trying to decide under here. So this is a stronger area, that's what we want to see, and it continue to make its way up. So across the board, over the total market cap, I could see strength because of the breaks and the breaks again and the 50% and the test of the 50%. That doesn't mean that we have to shoot straight up to new all-time highs, but it's just giving us a lot more yeses than noes. And the risk is the downside, but there's more yeses. So it's, it's balancing out that risk. Remember what we said, buying at the lows, the risk is the downside but there's less room to drop because if we take an overall view, a macro view, then we believe Bitcoin's going to 100, 200, 500 grand and getting it as cheap as possible is great. But of course, there's a downside. But we're starting to make our way out of that now, which is a good sign. ETH, same sort of deal. We're 25% down on ETH. Bitcoin, we we're about 25% down from the high as well. Whereas the total market cap was only 20% down. So a lot of this money is going into some of the other alts which are making their way up like a Solana's and Ada's and those sort of things. So ETH at the moment, 25 down. But again, showing you the break, the little retest here, the break again, another retest. But we can see that it's slightly weaker at the moment than Bitcoin. This is just on a short term time frame. You can see there, there are the highs, but it hasn't broken the highs in the last 24 hours. Whereas Bitcoin, it broke the highs in the last 24 hours. So Bitcoin is currently stronger. And if I had to take a guess, I would say that we're probably going to see some of the dominance flow back into Bitcoin based on this because it's, it's starting to move more than the others. And ADA is another one of those examples. We saw ADA move up yesterday and close back under the all-time high. So this is just a short-term thing, potentially. I'm not saying it has to happen, but just because I'm seeing that strength on Bitcoin versus ETH in this example, uh, Bitcoin is showing that strength over ETH in terms of its price. It's breaking through to new highs, whereas ETH is just holding underneath those highs for now. This is a short-term look at the market. And so if we do get that takeoff on Bitcoin, then I suspect we'll see some of the dominance come back to BTC. Whether we get to this 50 or 53%, anyone's guess at this point. But ideally, I want to see that. I hope the market wants to see that too so that we can get the money, all the new stuff flowing back into Bitcoin. And then eventually, we'll see it start to flow out into altcoins again. So we build up the space and then let it trickle down. That's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I know it's probably a little more of a conservative approach, whereas you've got a lot of people just saying to buy all the dips. But I prefer to play it a little more conservatively, buy on the fear and greed average price at the moment, 34K, buy again as we see some conf confirmation, a breakout of highs, a retest of highs. It feels stupid at the time. I think, you know, if I go into my market psychology of trading and investing, imagine buying at 38 when just the other week it was at 29 or 28 and there are going to be people that are calling you an absolute fool for it but you honestly don't know it's the same people who come out of the woodworks and say well you should have bought it 48 because now it's at 58 and you go well how do you know it wasn't going to drop down to 30 you don't and so you just got to play that game and create a plan that suits you you know if you're always thinking about what the other person is trying to tell you or uh you know them trying to say well you should have done this or that then you're playing someone else's game. You're better off playing your own. And I hope you guys have begun to create your own plans. And thanks for dropping your comments down below when you say that you have and you're beginning to figure it out. That's the, the best thing. For people to be able to figure out how they can survive and then thrive with their finances gives them that next step to financial freedom. And I hope everyone can find that, especially in these uncertain times. Take that power back for yourself rather than giving it to other people. And that applies in all areas of life. Wealth, health, health, mindset, everything. So on that note, I'll leave you guys there. I'll see you at the next video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, bell notification icon, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, or I'll see you on 
the Investor Accelerator Patreon group. Link to that is down below. Catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.